In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, it's not that I want to mix things up this morning, it's just that I forgot my microphone. <laughs> and I thought what I had to say was probably worth your hearing, <laughs> so I came over to the angel lectern. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these clothed in white robes and from where have they come? Here we are, brothers and sisters. We have almost reached the end of the Christian year. The year started last December with Advent, but now it is November and the Sundays are numbered in the 20s after Trinity. It happens that at the end of the Christian year, there are two summary, two summary Sundays. Two what does it all mean Sundays? These summary Sundays are placed here to help us believers understand what the whole sweep of the story is about. What is the meaning of all the scripture we have heard over this past year? What was the point of it all? The first of the two summary Sundays is actually all about us, about our lives as men, women, children, youth, about how to understand this life and about the promise of the life to come. Today is all about us as followers of Jesus, about our present and about our future, about what life is like, about what we can expect in it, and about the way it ends, at least for those who give themselves to God. This is All Saints Sunday. Just a quick footnote here. The second of the summary Sundays is three weeks away. We call that Sunday Christ the King. That Sunday is all about our God and especially about the second person of the Trinity, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is King of kings and Lord of lords. But the discussion of this theme, this summary Sunday, we will leave to the last Sunday of November. We call the first of the summary Sundays All Saints. The Greek word hagios appears 229 times in the New Testament, in the Greek of the New Testament. At least 60 times that word is translated into English as saints. The opening of St. Paul's letter to the Romans is typical to all who are beloved of God in Rome, called as saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. His address to believers at Corinth is similar. To the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Jesus Christ, saints by calling, with all who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So, to be a Christian, to be a Christ follower, is to be a saint. This is a bad news, good news description. So let me explain. Bad news first, to be a follower of Jesus, to be a saint, which we all are by New Testament definition, is for now to be in a state of war. 
This world is disordered. This world is in rebellion against the one who made it and who made us. Sin and disease are rampant here. Death is the end here. Satan tempts here. If we are going to follow Jesus here, there will be challenges aplenty. And even if we don't follow Jesus in this life, there will be suffering aplenty. But to follow Jesus is to face into the suffering and to embrace the warfare. We all sang that wonderful opening hymn for all the saints. All of the images of that hymn are of warfare entered and warfare ended. The elder asks in today's lesson from Revelation, who are these clothed in white robes and from where have they come? The elder answers his own question. These are they who have come out of the great tribulation and who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So life in this world for followers of Jesus is called the great tribulation, the great grinding, as if a grain of wheat between two massive stones, grinding, tribulation. And like Jesus and with Jesus, blood is shed. It is often a fierce battle here, is it not? I'm reminded of John Stott, the great English evangelist who preached on All Saints Sunday um, years ago at Chapel Hill, and who said, if we compromised less, we would suffer more. Grinding, like Jesus and with Jesus, blood is shed here. That's the bad news portion of today's summary. The banners, all the wonderful banners that were carried in today's procession bore names on them of loved ones, ones who experienced the grinding, the sorrows, the troubles of this life. Human life in this disordered, fallen, rebellious world is filled with challenges and tears, especially for those who would live the beatitudes of today's gospel, or who would follow the charge given in the signing of the cross at baptism. Remember these words? You shall not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified and to fight bravely under his banner against the world, the flesh, and the devil, and to continue Christ's faithful soldier and servant to the end of your days. That's the charge given at baptism. A corollary of this pledge season the corollary in this pledge season is that we are those who generously share what we have in a world that selfishly hoards what it has. This summary Sunday is honest about the bad news of the difficulty of living in a world that operates as if God were an irrelevance and that lives under Satan's sway. So the bad news of this summary Sunday is that life is not easy. You don't think it's easy, do you? The summary is that life here is not easy because we are in a state of war. Now, for the good news. Ready for the good news? The warfare is not forever. That's extraordinarily good news. As Father Terry Fulham of St. Paul's Darien used to say, we have read the book 
and we know how the story ends. The story ends very well indeed for us, for all God's saints, for all of us, and not because of us, but because of Jesus Christ. Jesus has already won the battle. He won the battle on the cross. And when our warfare is over, we will share in His victory. White robes, no more bloodshed, and palm branches, victory all around. More than this, eternal joy and lasting wellness. No more hunger, no more scorching heat. I'm tempted to say no more sultry heat, like today. No more tears, no more division of nations, of languages, peoples, and tribes. It is finally seeing the one on the throne, and it is shelter by the throne, and it is living water endlessly. Moreover, as the reading from Ecclesiasticus tells us, it is the place where even the forgotten are remembered. Heaven indeed. One more bit of good news. It is why we gather here Sunday after Sunday, not just to rehearse the whole of the story, but to have heaven break in even now with a meal whose elements are inexhaustible and with a company where nation and race and language are irrelevant. Here, brothers and sisters, and we can here call ourselves brothers and sisters when outside these doors we would never do. And here, brothers and sisters, we can already see into heaven. Despite the battle, we temporarily leave outside and sometimes, sometimes even bring inside. Even the bad news of this present life, in this, in this bad news of the present life, there is abundant good news. We are saints, sanctified ones. And even in the midst of the warfare, we know the comforts of the comforter. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Jesus has accepted us into his family and into his army, and he has given us his Holy Spirit. We know the friendship of Jesus, and we know the friends of Jesus. They are sitting all around us. So the summary is this. Present warfare with heaven breaking in, followed by victory and peace at the last. It's been a story worth the telling and a year worth the living. So happy All Saints Day, saints. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen.